Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, as always, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content featuring another obscure, not used very often, restricted Pokemon, and that is going to be Reshiram today. Reshiram, the Dragon and Fire type from the Black and White series, very interesting Pokemon. I think it's got a lot of potential and uh, I have to say that I did take a lot of inspiration for this particular build, the Reshiram uh, part of the team uh, from Phil from, uh, that's a plus one. I, uh, I watched a stream of his from a while ago. He was playing Psychic Seed Reshiram. Now I don't know if this, the, the, the spreads are probably a little bit different, um, but we are playing the Psychic Seed. It gives you a little bit of extra kind of stability, staying power, uh, and makes Reshiram difficult to deal with. Now the rest of the team is completely different from his. We do have the Tapu Lele. Obviously we need the terrain support there. Uh, we've went for a Scarf variant, but we've got Magic Room as well on the Tapu Lele. It gives us a way to shut down things like Xerneas. Um, and that's been something that was used in previous formats where Tapu Lele and the Restricteds were uh, accessible. Um, and then supporting cast, we've got a level one Ninetales. Don't worry, it will be leveled up to level 50. So um, Ninetales gonna provide a nice combination with something like the Whimsicott as well. I did want a Chlorophyll Whimsicott in the team, but unfortunately I just didn't have the hidden ability, don't have the uh, ability uh, capsule or whatever it is to change the ability either to a hidden one. So we've went with the Prankster one, which I do feel like it still works in the team and gives us a little bit of an extra buff in certain areas, whereas other places the Chlorophyll one would kind of perform a little bit better maybe. Um, but, you know, taking advantage of the sun, irregardless, uh, the, the prankster one is still going to be good. We've got um, Amoongus here just to give us a little bit of stability, speed, uh, redirection as well with the Rocky Helm. We've got Intimidate from the Crookedile giving us a dark type in as well. Um, so all in all, I feel like the team can perform very well. Like I say, Reshiram is not a Pokemon that we see very often, um, but I think we're going to be able to pick up some results today. As always, the Poker Pace is down in the description below. We'll have a couple of games, show you how the team pilots, and then we'll end up with the rental team at the end of the episode. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let me know down in the comment section what your thoughts are on Reshiram as a restricted. Do you like it? Have you tried it? Tell me, tell me. I want to hear. But without further ado, friends, we're going to jump straight into game one of today's episode. Okay, so first up today, we have Ephra VGC playing a team of Groudon, Zapdos, Cherum, Entai, Dusclops, and Incineroar. Um, so again, we've got speed control on the team in the Dusclops. Uh, maybe the Entai, maybe has uh, Bulldoze. Um, but the Dusclops going to be the main kind of speed setter on the team, uh, supporting the Groudon. So Trick Room going to be the main mode for my opponent to kind of go down. Um, we could go something like uh, Reshiram. I feel like Reshiram is pretty good as a lead for sure. We could go Tapu Lele as well, to be honest, uh, because it gives us real firepower to start with. It stops the um, fake up from the Incineroar as well. My opponent doesn't really have terrain support. Um, we probably want some sort of trick room kind of countermeasure, which would be good in Amoongus, although not great against his team overall, just with all the fire types and uh, flying in there. Um, and do we want Intimidate or do we want something like... I mean, Amoongus could be good if we don't bring the Lele because then, you know, if they set the trick room up, we can kind of uncall them into that. Um, I feel like Ninetales could be... All right as well, but Crooked are probably the better option out of everything because Crook kind of can come in, can intimidate something like the Groudon, immune to stuff that the Zapdos is going to throw out to us, which is going to be a little bit annoying. Uh, hits the Dusclops for super effective damage. Um, just needs to watch out for the Cherumite, I feel, more than anything. So, let's see how this first one goes. Let's see how this first one goes. The Great Friend and Groudon. So, anti Groudon. Well, this isn't the worst. I feel like we played this team in our last episode, you know, and this is like Scarf Entai, which makes it a little bit more tricky to deal with, of course. Um, we could protect Reshiram here and just get some damage onto the Groudon, or we could go after the, the Entai as well. Which might not be a bad play, to be honest. So I think, yeah, like depending on what we got in the back to kind of come in, we've got a way to, to hit the Entai for good damage. I mean, we've got a Moongus to come in. Uh, the Intimidate will help. Um, I think we probably use Lele here. We could Magic Room as well. Uh, get rid of items. 
could be a play. But it feels like a little bit of a waste, to be honest. I think we just protect Reshiram, just go for the side shock into the Entai. Hope that we can outspeed the Entai. If it is the Scarf variant, of course, it might not be. Yeah, it's going to go straight after the Lele here. And that is us down. Okay, well, they're locked into Sacred Fire, right? They are locked into Sacred Fire, so they can only Precipice Blades us. Reshiram definitely outspeed in that Groudon. Um, and we can bring in Crocodile. Crocodile not. Uh, hmm. Do we bring... Hmm, yeah, I think we have to. We have to intimidate the Groudon. I mean, a blue flesh should get the Groudon, in all honesty. Like, it really should get the Groudon. Um, Crocodile, are we going to be able to take down? I think we have to probably protect Crocodile here from a Sacred Fire, in all honesty. The other option is go Earth Power into the anti but i don't know if that'll be enough to take it down but at the same time we're gonna have to take a precipice blades which is gonna like really hurt whereas a blue flesh should be enough to get the ground on here um and if we protect we've got to hope that we don't need to take a precipice blades but i can't see them going sacred fire into restroom here they gotta go for the crocodile um scarfed anti though yeah it's the same team we played yesterday i think with the mewtwo team I'm glad I'm going to switch out. Okay. That's kind of fine. Because, like, Cherim coming in is just going to get absolutely obliterated here. Um, it gives us a little more room, I guess. Because we could potentially sacrifice uh, Amoongus the next turn to a Sacred Fire from the Entai. We we'll get this blue flare off. Which is, yeah, I mean, takes the Cherim down to its sash. I mean, this actually opens up the door for us a little bit more where we can earth power into the Entai. Because the Entai is a big thing that's, like, giving us a lot of issues right now. Where we could switch into Amoongus, sack Amoongus here. Uh, go for the earth power. Hope the earth power is enough to get the Entai. Um, and then, like, what's the Cherim really, really going to, like... Is it threatening too much? I mean... The anti has got the special defense boost here, which <clears throat> does make it a little more tricky to uh, to deal with, of course. But at the end of the day, we can get Crocodile back in. We can then protect it, deal with the anti. We should be able to get it in two, two hits. Uh, Sacred Fire can miss as well, although it's deciding not to today. So um, Amoongus is going to take that <clears throat> not very well. So we're kind of depleting Pollen Puff. But yeah, we, we're not really worried about that too much. So yeah, the Pollen Puff is a little bit awkward for us to deal with. But I mean, they're not going to be able to Pollen Puff off the damage of another Earth Power this next turn. So that's a big thing. If they Pollen Puff their Entai, Entai does go down. And then Crocodile, Reshiram in a good spot to kind of potentially clean up the rest of the rest of the game. Um, Depending on what they've got. So we'll Earth Power again. We have to protect. We have to protect here. We can't let Crook go down. Because then Reshiram versus the world is not ideal. Um, I think the big problem for us would be if the Groudon comes in. And then the sun goes away. And then we don't have that, that blue flare boost. Which might make it a little bit more awkward for us to deal with. So ooh, Zapdos coming in. That's a nice switch from my opponent in all honesty. Um, they're going to try and I think... Solar Blade, yeah. What base speed is Cherim as well? Like, because did it outspeed us? 85, it shouldn't outspeed us. Uh, 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 will outspeed Reshiram. Crocodile, we are max speed Crocodile Jolly, so we're 92 base speed, so we should get the jump on Cherim. So we will be able to get Cherim now and Blue Flare into uh, the Zapdos. So their base 85. Let's just Darkest Lariat into that slot just for safety because we don't want to miss with like a Rock Slide or High Horsepower. Uh, weather Ball coming out. Not ideal for Krook but can take that. Darkest Lariat there and a Blue Flare should get rid of the Zapdos. The Sun disappears this turn as well. Which is actually kind of alright for us to be able to get a blue flare into Groudon to potentially take it down. 
Um, because if it comes down to like Entai and Reshiram, then we're fine. So the terrain disappearing. Groudon coming in. We'll get the sun back up. <clears throat> we know, like, what's the Entai got though? Has it got something like... If it's got Bulldoze, that's terrible for us. If it's got Bulldoze, which it quite possibly has, you know? Like, Bulldoze, Precipice Blades just, just wins the game for my opponent. Um, we have to go Blue Flare. Blue Flare and Protect. Crookedale. I mean, do we protect Crookedale? Probably not, you know? I think we probably go high horsepower into Entai. Or do we protect? Because then at least... If they go for the Sacred Fire, which it's likely they do, right? Then at least Precipice Blades is still a double target attack. Which makes it a little bit more likely that Reshiram could take it. But it depends on the build of the Groudon. Hopefully we see the Sacred Fire and not Bulldoze. Snarl. Okay. Still not ideal. Could have done with that missing. Uh, but Crookedile not actually affected by this too much. So Crook still might be able to do this. Depending on the damage here. Yeah. Might be able to... Oh, and the bu oh, the burn. The burn. The burn. Okay, well that light locks it for us really. Because uh, it's not really not going to be a problem anymore. Uh, Precipice Blades will take that. Because of the burn, we get really lucky there. Um, although I think Crookedown then would have been able to close the game out. So not like so, so lucky because now we can just Earth Power the Entai. We know it's locked in. We can just Darkus Lariat into the Groudon. That'll be enough to get the, the Groudon here. So like I still think that Crookedown would have been able to close that one up without the burn. We would have just lost Reshiram there. But then you're locked into Snarl. Crookedown's going to outspeed Groudon. So we would have been able to take it down. So... Off to a decent-ish start, a bit shaky, but we will move on to game two of today's episode. Okay, up next we have an Ice Rider Calyrex, Stack Attacker, Indeedy, Entai, a Lolan Executor, and an Urshifu. So the uprise of a Lolan Executor. We did play one last week on the channel. We didn't go down too well, so hopefully we can get a better result here. Heavy Trick Room team, of course. You've got the Pokemon that are going to perform out of Trick Room pretty well. Are going to be things like Entai, Urshifu. But the main speed control on this team is going to be Trick Room. Running right through things like uh, Ice Rider Calyrex has access to it. Stack Attacker. And I'm pretty sure Alolan Executor does as well. Um, Amoonga is going to be quite useful here if the Trick Room does go up. So we need to probably bring that. I think Kukudal for the Intimidate is pretty nice. Um... Not so good against things like Entai, of course, because it is going to outspeed us naturally. The Urshavu could be a little bit problematic as well, but we do have the Chopper Berry there, which can kind of help. Um, do we just go big Blitz mod with something like... Um, 90? I mean, we could go... We could pull a little bit of a... Sh and the, the Psychic Terrain makes it difficult to pull the Encore Disable combination that we've got between Nine Tails. And whimsicott but nine tails is quite nice because it does have the, the the spread attack where we can actually just nail something i think we go reshiram nine tails tepe lele and we'll go among us yes we'll lock in with that see if it's going to be good enough i don't know i don't know i don't know the amount of firepower we have we should be able to deal with the ice rider pretty well but we'll see, we'll see. I don't know. Like Nine Tails gives this sun boost to Reshiram, which is just insanely powerful with that blue flare. Like insanely powerful. Um, and they're bringing the psychic terrain. So you know we've got the heat wave, which gets around the redirection, which is which is super nice. Although they're going to be able to get Trick Room up here, which is not ideal, um, to say the least. But um, the Shadow, the Ice Rider, is not in the best of spots i think we just double into um the ice rider here with a heat wave and i mean we could disable follow me but we're probably better off just going for a heat wave here you know um in all honesty yeah the thing that i had was disable on call with with uh whimsicott and um, it felt quite a nice combination with the nine tails where we could kind of utilize that. We'll go for the blue flare and the heat wave here. I think it's pretty, 
pretty overwhelming because they're gonna go redirect right we do open the door for them to get something like um stack attack around the field you know which isn't great uh because we'll we'll remove oh, especially when they're uh weakness policy which is not ideal um but we do have a moon this coming if they're setting the trick room up which they're likely to do here right yeah and the beauty about Mungus is it does underspeed the the, um, the Ice Rider because it's not as slow as just uh, Glastria. <sighs> okay, Stacks coming onto the field. Mungus and Tapu Lele in the back. Not the Pokemon you really want. Um, it's like, do we just allow Ninetales to go down here and just try and Heatwave and then just protect? Reshiram, I think that's probably the best, best port of call here, because then we can get Amoongus in uh, and just put that Calyrex to sleep. We know it's not got safety goggles. Um, the best that my opponent can do in that situation is is going to be flinching us with a rock slide. That's the best hope. So, these boost, not ideal at all. But it is the defense boost, so... You know, a little bit going for us, I guess. Um, the Glacial Land's coming out. <clears throat> but our only option is Amoongus. So, we'll spore. Yeah, we'll spore into the Calyrex. And we'll go after, we'll chase after the, um, we'll spore. And we'll Blue Flare into the Stack Attacker. And hope we don't get flinched. Hope we don't get flinched. They are life orb as well, so they're going to hit pretty hard. But Reshiram should be able to take at least one rock slide. Uh, they're going to try and double rock slide. I mean, Amoongus will be able to take a double rock slide here. Ooh, Amoongus dodges, but Reshiram going to have to take one. <sighs> Not ideal. But the blue flare, as long as we get it off, we're going to be in a good spot. Yep, blue flare. This should be enough to take it down. And then, yeah, Moongus in a great spot. Depending on what comes in, of course. Um, what's their next Pokemon going to be? Urshifu. So that's actually pretty good for us. Pretty good, because we can just spore. And we got Lele in the back. Okay, how many turns of Trick Room we got? We can't really protect on, on the Urshifu. But we may... Underspeed the Oshifu. If it's max speed, we probably underspeed it. So we could drop a Draco on it. What variant is it? Let's have a quick look. Is it the water? Yeah, water. Yeah, we'll drop a Draco. As Joey would like to say, let's drop a Draco. Oh, I should have my drop a Draco um, hoodie on. But we should underspeed the Oshifu here. I think we'll be pretty fine now. Um... Maybe it would have been better going after the Calyrex, but... Oh, they underspeed us. Huh. We're modest Reshiram. They're going to get us. They're going to get us, even with the sun up. Are they going to get us? They're going to get us. Yeah, just, I think. Yeah. Very close. Oh, the sun up. It doesn't do a, a whole lot of damage. Um. Okay, well, we've got the Tapu Lele to come. We just need the Calyrex to stay asleep now. We really do. Um... And we'll just Moonblast the Calyrex. And we can sport the Urshifu. Uh, yeah, we don't want to lock in. We don't want to lock into Psy Shock. Yeah. We just need the Calyrex to stay asleep. If it wakes up here, we're done. We are done for. But the Trick Room kind of helping us out a bit. And then when the Trick Room ends... Is it this turn it ends? Okay, Shifu just protecting here. That's fine. Come on. Plus one, we're done. Yeah. One turn wake up. I mean, what can you do? What, what can you do in that situation? One turn wake up. We did what we could. Ah, good game to my opponent. Pretty salty about that. Pretty salty. 
I didn't expect the Oshifu to underspeed us in Trick Room. That's the thing. So it's a pretty slow Oshifu. Um, if we'd had a little bit more health, maybe we could have we could have got that. Dropped a Draco. I think that would have been game. Uh, it's unlikely there would have been sashed, I would have thought, from that point. So, anyway, good game to my opponent. We'll hop over now, friends, and we'll get the rental code for today's team. Okay, friends, here is the rental code for today's team. If you do try it out, as always, please let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on Reshiram and the build in general, and if you've had fun with it. That's the big thing. We didn't really get to see too much of the Whimsicott today. Like I say, uh, it would have been nice to have the Chlorophyll ability. So, if you do adapt this team for yourself, uh, maybe that's something that you look at, because the Chlorophyll does and then conflict with the psychic train that you're going to be pulling up with the tapu lele a little bit unfortunate in that last game i think really in hindsight the tapu lele was probably not the best call to bring in that that position maybe maybe the crocodile might have been better but then again it wouldn't have really helped us out against the urshifu the whimsicott in that situation would have been uh, a lot more helpful in that situation especially because we would have had access to something like encore that we could have really made use of um rather than the tapu lele that was kind of locked in and the one turn wake up you were undoubtedly going to get punished from that weren't we so uh, swings and roundabouts isn't it but have fun with the team like i say if you do try it out thank you so much for tuning in hope you've enjoyed today's episode and we'll be back tomorrow with another episode and a brand new team so stay tuned for that friends have a great rest of your day and uh, more importantly than anything else take care of yourselves and until next time bye bye